Welcome. Here's how I introduce the equation of a circle to my students in a geometry class. Uh, we'll start the day with a pretty easy challenge. Let me just draw some coordinate axes, x, y axes, and let's just pick a point like uh, I don't know, 2, comma, 3. And I'm going to ask, find me a point whose distance from 2, 3 is 5. Give me a coordinates of a point that's 5 units away. It's not much of a challenge. Most people might do something like, oh, let's, okay, we'll just go straight, straight up 5 units. What's that point? Well, I guess it's actually still the x value is 2, but the y value is 8. Voila, there's a point 5 units away from that black dot. Great. Give me another one. All right, instead of going 5 units up, let's go 5 units down. So I guess we're down here. Uh, still the x coordinate's 2, but 5 units down from 3 is 2, negative 2. Great. We found two points at distance 5 from that black dot. Find me another 2. All right, not too bad. So we'll obviously go obviously to the right and the left, the next obvious things to do. So let's go uh, 5 units to the right. That gets me at 7, 3. And we'll go 5 units to the left. I guess it gets me at negative uh, uh, 3, comma 3. And clearly the game we're playing is uh, just finding points of distance 5 from here. And um, I'm going to now be obnoxious and ask, give me a fifth one. Now, the game's not fun anymore. And um, when students do this, they might try this point up here. Uh, what would that be? Um, 7, comma 8. And we'll realize that's just too far away. I want something at distance 5 from that black point. How are we going to do it? And we'll mess around and have some troubles, and we'll eventually realize what I'm really asking for is that all the points distance 5 from that black dot will have to be a circle. So I guess I'm asking, find me points on the circle of radius 5 with the center 2, comma 3. How are we going to do that? And as I play, we, we mull on this for a while, eventually someone realizes that I'm being very nice by choosing the number 5 for the radius, because we're basically looking for a point whose distance 5, something like this. Now, luckily, we use a coordinate system that has 90 degree angles in it. There's a natural right triangle with any line segment you draw. And I chose 5, which makes you think of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So this suggests maybe if I went 3 units over and 4 units up, that would do the trick. In fact, more than suggested, it would be true. So there's, there's another point um, on the circle, distance 5 from the black dot. So it's, what is it? Uh, 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 4 is 7. 5 comma 7. And then you can do the same trick to the left to get one of these matching points over here. I guess you can do the same thing downwards, and we can work out all these points. So now we've got eight points, the distance five from that black dot. Brilliant, eight points in the circle. And of course, I'm going to be the demanding teacher, and I want more. Give me more points. Again, we struggle for a while. But then actually, eventually, a student might think, well, you can do the same thing, just, but this time to do four on the bottom and three up. And that'll give you a slightly different range of points. So that's going to be now six, um, six, six. And then you can do those matching sort of variations on the left, right, up, and down. And now I've got all these points. Great. All right, so I'm now going to be truly mean as a teacher. Looks like you've got me a point with y coordinate 8. Up here is 8. Can we point with y coordinate 7, y coordinate 6, y coordinate 3? I want one with a y coordinate 4. And obviously they're going to be there. If I just look at my picture, there's got to be some point there with y coordinate 4, and I guess another one to the left with y coordinate 4. Give me a point x comma 4 that lies on the circle. Now things are getting obnoxious. All right, so this takes some doing, but let's look at what's going on here. I like this idea of this right triangle, so let me just be very, very slow here. We've got the black dot at 2 comma 3. I'm just redrawing my picture. Oh, what happened to my black dot? 2 comma 3, there it is. We've got this red dot at x comma 4. And we want this line of, we want this to be a distance 5 from the origin. 5. Well, this has got a natural right triangle. This point is 2. This is uh, whatever the x coordinate is, x. So what's this distance on the bottom? Well, it's x inches over versus 2 inches over. This must be the difference, x minus 2. And how high up is it? Is, is it? Well, it says 3 inches up versus 4 inches up. Oh, this is 1 inch. So actually, I can work out an equation x must be, that must be true of x. Just use Pythagoras' theorem. x minus 2 squared plus 1 squared must equal 5 squared. That tells me x minus 2 squared is 24. That tells me x minus 2 is root 24 or negative root 24, which tells me x better be 2 plus root 24 or 2 minus root 24. And I'm glad I got two answers because I actually expected two answers. Remember the dot on the right, the dot on the left. Uh, which one's which? Uh, 2 plus 20, root 24 must be the one on the right, and 2 minus root 24 must be the one on the left. So there we are. I've got two more points on the circle. 2 plus root 24, comma 4, pretty ugly, and 2 minus root 24 over 4. 
Alright, so there we are. We're off, we're off in the game. We can work out lots of points now and have fun. In fact, here's a little exercise for you. Do the same thing, but I'm going to insist I want one with an X, Y coordinate of 9. Go for it. See what the math tells you. And see if the math tells you, you know, go ahead and draw one of these diagrams and, and see why geometrically it tells you the same thing. Good exercise for us to do. All right, now having played with that for a while, let me be more abstract. I'm now going to ask, what is the equation of the circle? Now, what on earth does that mean? What, is that, what do I mean by an equation? That's, that takes some thought. It's not, it's not obvious. We use these words in math all the time, but actually, what does it really mean, what I'm asking for? All right, we definitely got the point 2, comma 3. That's the center of the circle. And we're obviously looking for points on the circle. So I guess the most general point of all would be something like some x coordinate, some y coordinate. So I guess I'm really asking, what sort of equation must be true for point x, y to be on the circle of radius 5 with center 2, comma 3? Well, we've kind of done it. We've kind of like playing with it, found equations that must be true. So let's see if we can do this in this more, slightly more abstract setting. So let me just clear some space. We clearly want this point 2, 3 to be a distance 5, and, and the point x, y to be a distance 5 from each other. So we're back to this idea. Whoops, where's my pen? Yep. 5. There's a natural right triangle associated with this. Now this has coordinates 2, and this point is x coordinate x. So it's 2 and x going on down here on the x-axis. Uh, on the y-axis, we've got a y-coordinate 3 compared to a y-coordinate of y. So we've got 3 and y going on the right axis. So let me just pull this triangle aside. So we've got a triangle like this. Hypotenuse is 5. Now, what is the length of this base? What's this bottom length here? It's the difference between x and 2. x minus 2. x inches over minus 2 inches over means x minus 2. Uh, this vertical leg of the triangle is y inches up versus 3 inches up. That's y minus 3. So actually, Pythagoras tells me if I've got any hope for this working, for x, y to be distance 5 from 2, 3, I must have Pythagoras' theorem working. x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared must be 5 squared. There is an equation that must be true for a point x, y to be on the circle with center 2, 3 and radius 5. People call this the equation of this circle. There it is. Um, you can actually think about this, this equation for a bit. Obviously, 5 should be in it somewhere. Where's, where's 5 and what we're doing? Well, there it is. It actually comes as 5 squared. And that makes sense because we did the hypotenuse squared. And it's 2 and 3, where, where's that coming into it? We can see the 2 there and you see the 3 there. And there's an only little difference there. We actually did differences from the center. So I'm not surprised there's minus signs involved if I really think about it. But I can see from the equation I've really got the center 2, 3 being involved. I've really got the radius 5 being involved. Now, let's do this really abstractly. Oops, uh, delete this, delete this. So let's not be stuck to the numbers 5 and 2, 3. What's going on in complete abstraction? And we're ready for it. Obviously, it's just going to be Pythagoras' theorem. In fact, most things in geometry are just Pythagoras' theorem in disguise. And I kid you not when I say that. All right, here's the point A, B. Let's just do a general point with x coordinate A, y coordinate B. I'm looking for all points on a circle of radius R. R. OK, abstraction. What must be true for a general point x, y to be on that circle of radius r? Well, if I do exactly the same work as the ones I'm erasing right now, goodbye, it's being erased, erased. Let's draw the natural thing to associate with line segments on a coordinate plane. That would be lines, uh, right triangles. Hypotenuse is r. What's this? Well, it's y inches up versus b inches up. This is y minus b. Uh, what's this? leg here, well, it's x inches over versus a inches over. It must be x minus a. Now, now, a little piece of contention here. I have to draw my point to the top right of the center. If I drew my point over here, I guess I still have y minus b, but I'd have this time my x up here, I'd have a minus x. Instead of x minus a, I'll have a minus x. However, in Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to square things. So squaring a minus x is the same as x minus a. It doesn't matter if my point happened to be over here. Dude, if my point had to be down here, I might be off by my b minus y's and y minus b's. Things might be off the other backwards. But if I'm squaring stuff, backwards doesn't matter. It's all going to be the same. So Pythagoras' theorem says, all right, for a point x, y to be on the circle of radius r, I must have that x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. There it is. There is the equation of a circle with center a, b, and radius equal r. Beautiful. Um, 
That's it. That's it, Pythagoras' theorem. There's an equation that must be true for any point to be on a circle. Now, I can go backwards and give you the equation first and ask you what was the center. And there's a little annoying things here, and I'll, I'll go straight to the hard stuff. If you want to sort of, you know, do the proper lead-in, you might want to look at, uh, I can't remember what chapter it was in, but it's one of, the, one of the chapters in volume two of this book. Suppose I gave you this equation first and asked you, here's the equation of a circle. Obviously, it's coming from some sort of Pythagorean type thing. What's the center and what's the radius? All right, well, hmm. Well, this is annoying. Maybe I need to think of this. I need to get, like, I'm doing, remember I was doing difference, the distance from the center, the differences of x coordinates, difference of y coordinates. So I've got this minus a is minus b. I've got a plus sign here. Maybe I should think of this as x minus minus 2 squared. Teachers are going to be mad at me if I don't put parentheses around that minus 2. So there's my a plus this y squared term is annoying. It's not minus anything. Well, I can think of it as y minus 0 squared, if you like. So that must be my b. So the center must be negative 2, comma, 0. And remember, we have an r squared here. So this 17, most kids will probably say it's radius of 17 at first. No, 17 is r squared. So that means the radius is actually root 17. Try annoying. But, you know, we need to practice with that. And, and you know, it takes a little bit of doing. But we can get there. And pretty soon we can rattle off the equations of circles. And, and look at circles back and forth and, and everything's fine. All right, great. So do go ahead and do all the standard stuff that one does in a geometry class. Just look at my book or any other book. It's all fine and all fun and all good. And then I'm going to give you my challenge for you. So if you're a teacher watching this, here's my challenge for you as a teacher. And if you're a kid that really wants a good challenge, a student, go for it. Great. I'm up for good challenge for all, everyone. So, you know, a textbook question might be something like, da 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 I'll draw it again. Here's the point A. Here's the point B. I'll tell you A has coordinates 2, comma 7. I'm just making it up. B has coordinates 10, comma 15, say. Find me the equation of a circle that has the line segment AB as its diameter. That is, I want the equation of this circle. So I want AB to be the diameter of the circle. What's the equation of that circle? Now, most people will probably do the following. Work at the midpoint of AB, that must be the center. Once you've got the center, we're great. And work at the distance between A and B, and once you've got the distance, take half of it, and that would be the radius. And then you've got all the pieces. I'd like you to do that, if you like. And then, I claim the equation of a circle with center AB is x minus 2 times x minus 10, oops, plus y minus 7, times y minus 15 equals 0. Whoa. So, I believe you did an algebra in your equation that you got by looking at the, the midpoint and half the distance, and then did algebra in my equation, they turn it to be the same in the end. And what I love about mine, you can probably see what I did here. Obviously, I focus on the x coordinates, 2 and 10, and I focus on the y coordinates, 7 and 15. I've come up with some other formulation for working out the equations of a circle, and this is based on you know what you want this diameter to be. Um, why is, why is my approach working? What, why is this a valid formula for a circle? Very curious. See if you can figure that out. Um, and also, actually, there's something mysterious about my equation. Uh, if I just you know, did change the order of the multiplication of these x terms, I could rewrite the exactly the same equation, x minus 10 times x minus 2 plus y minus 7, whoops, y minus 15 equals 0. And then it looks like I'm focusing on Two and uh, ten and two, seven fifteen. That order. Because so I can look at the point, x coordinates being ten and then two, matching up with the y coordinates seven and fifteen. These are totally different points. So my question is, am I coming up with like different radii of the same circle? What's going on? If I work out the equation of the circle using one set of points for diameter, and then I get these other points, what what is this? Is this still a diameter? Does it make sense it's still a diameter? How can I just switch coordinates around and still be on the circle? Something really weird is going on there. Well, that is my wonderful mystery for you. Figure out why is this a valid method for working out the equations of a circle, and why if you switch coordinates around, you're still okay. It's still going to be a diameter of the same circle. Mystery, mystery, mystery. A lot of fun. All right, thanks so much.